Welcome to Earth and welcome to the Matrixers. Today with Shiva and Jonathan. Yes, we thought about making a video about out-of-body experience. That was often requested now. Exactly. And that's why we will be happy to comply with your wishes and talk about astral bodies, astral travel, experiences, etc. Speak. Yes, we have found that out-of-body experience is a key issue for us as one of the skills we use. And actually we haven't made that many videos about out-of-body experience, have we? No, we recently noticed that we have very few. Yes, we only have two or so, I think. No, there are at least three that I remember. Or three videos about out-of-body experience and we've already made 150 videos in. Exactly. Who cares? Once we have theory of out-of-body experience, technique of out-of-body experience, then we have a video 10 techniques for out-of-body experience. Then we have a difference between lucid dreaming and out-of-body experience, and we once made an experience video about out-of-body experience. I think that was 5 now. Compared to 150 videos, that's not that much. It's only 3% or so. Yes, approximately. That's why we thought, let's make a video about out-of-body experience again, exactly. So for a brief explanation of what out-of-body experience is. So out-of-body experience is actually equivalent to an out-of-body experience. This means that people who had near-death experiences then switched to their astral body. This is a higher frequented body, an image of the physical body, but in the 3D world. With this body you can go through the world invisibly. Yes, you can fly with it and go through walls etc. Already in the 18 in the 19th century, Goethe, yes Goethe, founded a club, a secret club, and it called itself the Club of the Invisibles. The name of this club already gives you a little idea of the direction in which this might go. In fact, Everyone who somehow dealt with astral travel and out-of-body experiences at his time was actually a member of this club, the Club of the Invisible. So you can see that Goethe already knew about the art of out-of-body experience. Astral travel is a lot of fun because when you detach from your physical body, you are in zero gravitational field. That means you are weightless. You might only weigh a few grams or so, if at all. And for this reason it is also very easy to fly with it. And flying with the astral body is just phenomenal. Yes, that's right. You can fly through the clouds. You can fly along the firmament. You can fly over the city and... That's a lot of fun and also gives a great feeling of freedom. So we have already met many, many people or they have also written to us, who themselves have an out-of-body experience or an out-of-body experience. Triggered an out-of-body experience in themselves. For example through the techniques that we once published, and they all reported it that way across the board. They had an incredible sense of freedom and it was an incredible experience that they never forgot. Yes. I mean, we've already made videos about astral travel, so we're going to keep the introduction really short. We are now going to tell everyone a technique for astral travel. The latest one I've discovered is scuba diving. Yes, the thought process is so floating and flying when the ego is just active or the filter, that's not possible. And then I turned that around. Then I imagined that the ocean was beneath me, so to speak, I was going diving. So I just turned around in the body and dived, went swimming. Um, yes, that worked very well. So that was phenomenally easy. Just dropping is a lot easier to imagine and do than try to float up, jump in the pool or jump. 
into a swimming pool or go scuba diving everyone may have done before. And yes, that's why the technology was very simple, very exciting and definitely worked. Maybe you try it out. Yes, in any case, sounds very interesting. So any of you who may have skydived or bungee jumped or something similar, maybe paragliding etc. What is there? He knows this feeling of flying or this feeling of falling very well. And if you can recall that in meditation, that means you lie in bed at night. Close your eyes and simply try to recall this feeling of falling or this feeling of flying as strongly as possible, because the astral body also reacts to it. And that would be a possibility. And many have also written to us and said, Yes, I managed to get into the astral body in meditation. But then I lie there like a board and can't get out of my body. Well, that's something we've read many times, and it's happened to everyone who's attempted to shift from the physical body to the astral body. And there I can suggest as a technique that you roll to the side. This means if the open side of your bed is on, say, you're right, roll over to the right. Yes. And there are even people who practice rolling. That means they put a mattress in front of the bed and practice rolling out of bed 100 times a day. Oh God, I would puke. And they roll out of bed and then fall onto the mattress. This is also a very good technique for programming the astral body, so to speak. You always have that feeling of falling. Yes. First you have the feeling of falling, because you fall from the edge of the bed onto the mattress and you can practice rolling at the same time. And that's actually a very good technique that has worked very well for quite a few people. Funnily enough, never for me. Yes, have you tried it yet? Clear. Quite often. Never worked. Yes, but for many others it worked very well. Hmm. Yeah, that means the astral body is a bit playful, I would say. Yes, that's right, and that's why you have to approach him in a playful way. It means practicing rolling like this, or imagining you're jumping out of the plane, or imagining you're in an elevator going up, and suddenly the cables snap and the elevator goes down. These are the possibilities with which one can trigger such a feeling of falling because the astral body reacts to impressions of flight and falling. And that's just one of the ways you can use it so that he feels addressed and then activates himself. Yes, maybe diving and swimming works so well for me because I really like swimming and diving. Maybe one of you likes to fly or roll around on the ground. So depending on what you like the most, maybe. Maybe there is a connection there? Yes, perhaps. So see what you like the most. Um. Another method that comes to mind is another Russian method. Roulette. No, not roulette, only Russian. The astral body also reacts to fears. That means you go to bed at night, make everything nice and dark and somehow, maybe even leave a window open. So Russian roulette after all? And then imagine if you meditate with your eyes closed that someone is looking through the window. That actually often worked, not with the window now, but always the feeling that someone is coming through the door or someone is in the house. Then there was fear, who's groping out there? Is correct. You're right, it often worked. Or that maybe a black shadow is standing at the window and looking through and watching you. Or an alien gray. Or an alien or something. They worked fine for me. Yes. 
there are also such possibilities. Because the astral body also reacts to fears, mostly to irrational fears. That there is such a black shadow at the window is actually, yes, it doesn't actually correspond to reality. You don't see something like that every day like a car or a traffic light or something. But a black shadow on the window is part of a surreal fear. And the astral body reacts to this. This is also a very good tip that you can try if you want. Because one of the advantages of fear, yes, fear can have disadvantages, we know, but also advantages. Fear is 100% convinced that out-of-body experience is possible. And that this is possible. Otherwise you wouldn't be afraid of it. Anyone who does not believe in out-of-body experience is not afraid of out-of-body experience. So fear has two sides, a good one and a not so good one. The less good thing, of course, is that fear can make you stop exercising or want nothing to do with it and ignore the whole issue and hope you never have to deal with it again. And the good side of fear is that it believes 100% that you can astral travel. No matter what you think about it or what doubts you have or what considerations you still have. Yes. That is the advantage of fear and you should use it with the Russian method. Especially when she's already there. You often lie in bed and then get scared. There are demons there. And why they don't use them right away is there. That's right. But the astral body is actually an artificial creation. Yes, funny, that's what I was about to bring up. The astral body is. By the way, we don't discuss the videos beforehand, as you might notice. It's also part of the matrix system. Yes and that's right. The astral body can only be used in the everyday 3D level and in the astral 4D level. The astral body can only be used there. And that's because there's a kind of frequency paradox between the digital matrix, which means in the spiritual sector it's also called 5D and 3D. And this discrepancy, this frequency discrepancy, just so to speak created 4D and thus also the astral body. Because normally you actually always have a body, a physical body and a mental body. The mental body can be used from 5D for the entire digital matrix. And the astral body actually only exists on matrix planets. Yes, the astral body was practically created as an image or as a shadow of the 3D matrix. It's like you have a body and you see your shadow. And the shadow, you can't touch it either. It's also not plastic, not physical in that sense. And that's how you can think of it with the 4D astral plane and the astral body. Yes, and the astral body is therefore actually electronic in nature. It is an electronic holographic pattern that it exhibits, or a holographic reality that it possesses. Of course you can now say yes, everyday physical life is actually a hologram reality. And of course that's true, yes, but on 4D you can also observe that much better that we are actually all just holograms. For example, if you are in your physical body and then you perceive someone, if you can get someone standing in front of you in their astral body, they will look like a ghost. And that's actually the old term for a hologram, spirit. And since in the past nobody knew anything about hologram technology and holography technology, they were called ghosts or spooks or spooky creatures.
the astral body cannot leave the Earth matrix. That's not possible for him. You have to switch to the so-called mental body. This is actually our natural body, substitute body, because you can see it in the digital matrix or in the digital matrix used in 5D. So if you want to leave the matrix with your astral body, to see what it looks like there, you would first have to switch from your astral body to your mental body, then that's possible. Yes, and how do you switch to the mental body? Actually exactly the same as you change into the astral body. I think we made a video about that. This means that you actually have to detach yourself from the astral body with your mental body. I find the difference between going into the astral body from the physical body and going into the mental body is that the vibration is much lower and it is much gentler. This means that when you switch to the astral body, you like to have really blatant vibrations and then you switch. And if you switch directly into the mental body, you hardly notice the transition at all, which means you have hardly any vibrations or no vibrations at all, and you are then mentally on the move. So you can also fly directly to the moon. Yes, and when you walk around the earth with your mental body, you can no longer perceive the extras. Then the world is extremely empty. Yes. You get very lonely. You'll feel very lonely when you're in your mental body, because all the extras don't have a mental body. Yes, I was recently out in the mental body and visited a woman who lived in the air. Aha! Yes, she practically lived in the clouds, now not here on our earth. It was definitely 5D because I went straight into the mental body and she lived there and gave redemption cards to people. She had one for me too. What was redeemed from there? I'm not entirely sure. Well, at least redeemed. Exactly. And the people stood there and of course all wanted a salvation card. Then I was back in the body and I thought, well, I have to go there again, I have to go to the woman again. I did that three times. In fact, it worked straight away. I went to see her three times and then she also showed me my card of salvation. There was even a date on it, but not the year. Oh, okay. Then we'll wait and see how that turns out for you. Exactly, yes. In any case, there are creatures that live in the air. Have you ever met someone, right? I might know now. I don't know who either. What? <laughs> yes, that was many years ago. That's when I thought, yes, I'll visit Jane Roberts. Some of you know Jane Roberts. She was a medium in the 70s who channeled the so-called personality Seth. And this Seth somehow dictated tons of books to her and I'd like to say that I absorbed all of these books at the time. And I have to say, they are very good. Nicely neutrally described, very philosophical. So those of you who like to philosophize are very well advised with Jane Roberts. There was little practical guidance. It was actually always mainly theory, philosophy, and yet very conclusive and very interesting. That's why I was quite interested in this series of books at the time and I read through a lot of books. Well, anyway, at the time I thought I'd visit Jane Roberts. Yes. What she does, because I think she died in 1984. She was in her mid-50s at the time and yeah okay. I didn't want to visit her at the time. <laughs> anyway, I've made up my mind to visit Jane Roberts tonight and see what she has to say. Then I flew around the Austral buddy at night looking for Jane Roberts. 
and indeed I found her. Yes, anyway I found her and she was in the air. She lived and dwelt in the air. And in a huge zeppelin. Yes, I thought that was cool too, because at some point I ended up there with my astral body looking for her and then I wondered, where did I end up here anyway? Because I was just trying to get her identifier and then just fly or jump to her. And then I suddenly found myself in a room that was furnished in a rather old-fashioned way. Although old-fashioned isn't the right term, it's more like something colonial, like Captain Nemo's submarine, for example. A little bit in that style, I think it's called Victorian, was this large room furnished. And then I looked around and thought wow, really take well, I also find the Victorian period very interesting. If there ever was one, you don't know. And then I thought, yes, but where am I here? And then I went to the window, looked out and then I saw that we were in the air. And then I knew oh, and then I looked out the window and actually saw it was a huge zeppelin. Yes, and then Jane Roberts showed up and we talked about how she lives here what she does and what her interests are in the world she lives in now, it was a very interesting conversation. In any case, yes. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of Seth and Jane Roberts, ah, uh, I recently had an experience there as well. Seth once said that we're in the Matrix, I think we're in elementary school. Yes, yes, he mentioned that once. Yes, exactly. And there I was recently on the higher astral plane and there I was also shown that the matrix, the multidimensional matrix, is practically divided into three sections. Once the kindergarten, that is actually the matrix, so the multidimensional matrix, is divided into three sections. After that comes absolute freedom and all that. Yes, but the matrix is divided into three sections. First the elementary school or kindergarten, so to speak, then the middle school and practically the master class, for mega crass experts. So I was allowed to take a look at the master class, i.e. the upper section. I don't know either. It was extreme. So you were there too. Unfortunately you don't remember now. I was also out astrally during the night. I remember that when you had the experience. But I don't remember that division now. Anyway, we were kind of in the second section, right at the top, so close to the master class. And then I just looked in there at the upper third section. So that seemed extremely difficult. But once you've done that, you really are infinitely free. Ah, okay. Yes, but we still have a few days ahead of us. Looks like it to me. Yes. Yes. Well, I don't know how this subdivision came about or who did it. In any case, the matrix can be divided into three sections. And yes, probably the ones that are still asleep and unconscious. Those who are already conscious or a little more awake and practice techniques such as out-of-body experience and dissociation. And what the master class really entails. Yes, very... Well... Those were just a few little anecdotes from our astral body experience. So thank you again for watching. We hope that our little video on out-of-body experience has inspired you, motivated you. And you are welcome to write to us below in the comments or something, what kind of experiences you have had or maybe what your first out-of-body experience was like. Things like that maybe. Yes, what you would like to experience when you are astral. Yes, don't forget. Always plan in your head in advance what you want to experience on the next out-of-body experience. Otherwise you will stand there and not know what to do. Also, I have a feeling that if you know in advance what you want to do, there is a better chance that you will actually go astral as well. Yes, then we wish you a nice weekend. Yes, take care. Much love ciao.